Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going over problem C of the recent Diff 2 Code Force Round 802. So I was actually practicing this prob uh, this contest in general, doing a virtual contest, as you can see, this is actually still running. Um, and I mostly because I got a, a couple of requests on this problem and I happen to be here because usually by the time I get to it, it's like a week later uh, and People already know how to do it, so I'm not going to do a video on it, right? So we'll see what how it goes, but let me know uh, what you think about this video and feedback and stuff like this. Um, as you know, I don't do many code force explanations, so this intro is a little bit uh, long, but hopefully it's good for you. Let me know. Uh, okay, so this one, the uh, let me actually, I assume that you already read the problem, so helping the nature, let's all help the nature, but let's me bring up my drawing utensils. Okay, so then the idea behind this problem is that, you know, uh, I, I think this is one of those problems that if you just look at someone's code, and this is what I do a lot sometimes, when you look at someone's code, it's quick, it's small, it's tight, but you don't really understand why it works, right? And here, I'm going to at least go over my logic, even if it's not I don't know if this is like the, the best idea per se, but this is my logic. I'm going to just copy over um, a number here, right? So basically the idea that I have for this problem is just, uh, and this is one of the test cases, is just greedy going from left to right. You can also do right from left or right to left. It doesn't really matter. Um, try to make all the numbers the same. Um, and how do we do this, right? And basically, we just look at the deltas. For example, we go almost like a scan line, but not really, but just going from left to right. So I'm going to change the color real quick. So for example, let's say we're here, right? Um, here, you know that we have to... Um, we have to... So basically, we in the operations that we're given, we can, um, we can subtract a number from the left or to the right, right? So here, obviously, we're going to choose it from the left because that's the only way to do it. So then now, after, uh, and the delta is three, as you can see, and we delete it, or uh, we subtract from the left. So this is three, right? So then afterwards, you have negative two on the left and negative two, oops, negative two, dot, 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 right? Um, and then now, we'll go to the next thing, right? So here, now we're here. And here we can already assume that all the numbers to the left are negative two because that's our, our you know, we already did the math, right? And here we go up by five, right? Um, because there's five numbers between negative two and three. So here you do not subtract from the left, you subtract from the right. So then here we, we have a, a five cost. Mm, that looks a little bit sloppy. But yeah, five cos, and you convert everything to the right. So then now you have negative two, negative two, and in theory, some uh, negative, well, negative two here, and then, you know, some number uh, numbers to the right. In here, this will be negative nine, uh, and this is zero, but, but yeah. Um, and of course, one thing that I would say is that just be um, because we are subtracting everything to the right side, the delta doesn't change, right? Meaning, what I mean by that is that the, these two delta and these two delta, um, the delta of those numbers, they don't change, right? So even though I write negative 9 here, that's just for, um, yeah. Okay, and then now I'm going to change the color again. And then now we go here, right? And of course, here we have, what's it, what did we say, seven, right? And kind of, you can see it here as well. So here we have, oops, we have a seven difference, and we know that we have to subtract from the left, right? So then now, afterwards, you get negative nine, negative nine, negative nine, negative nine, zero, oops, right? And of course, your cost is seven. And of course, just to kind of keep track, our running cost so far is three plus five plus seven, right? And then now there's only one more thing to be left. And of, 
because we can only subtract. I mean, you could add, but we'll do the adding in the last step is my idea. Um, and oh, maybe I'll use the right, but nonetheless. And here you, you have nine and you subtract nine from the right. And therefore, you know, you have another nine here, right? As the cost. And at way n, all the numbers are the same, and it's going to be negative 9, right? So in order to get it back to 0, you do negative 9 on the entire array, and so you add another 9. And thus, this is what, 18, 25, 30, 33, and that's our answer. That's basically one of the ways that you can think about it as a construction. Because um, maybe I explained this a little bit uh, backwards, but... One thing to notice is that you can always add, so you, there are two things you can always do, right? You can always add at the way and it doesn't really matter, right? So for the sake of simplicity, I just add everything at the end. And you can always subtract from the end as well, right? Meaning if I have, say, if at the end all the numbers are, uh, let's say you have like some big uh, sequence. Let me actually erase this now. Hopefully this is clear anyway. Um, yeah, let's say you have some numbers, say, I don't know, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is a very silly example. So then you do some math to the right, and then you can convert everything to 3, right? Um, in this case, you still, you're still you still able to take the your prefix, if you will, is the entire way, so you can still get the 3 back to 0 by just doing 3 more operations. So in that sense, now you just look at the delta between all the things, um, because this, yeah, one move to remove all here, one move to here, here, and so forth, right? So now four moves, and then now three more moves to get all the numbers which are now the same back to zero. So that's basically the idea. And with that in mind, I will now go over my code really quickly. But that's really the idea. Once you have the idea, the code should be, you know, there's two for loops or one for loop even actually. I probably could have done it in one for loop, but I was just, eh, I mean, it's fine, right? Um, but nonetheless, you get the idea. Oh, I have to take it. Sorry, friends. But yeah, you can see it. I did two for loops just to kind of, um, I mean, I, I, I think for me, my personal style is just I always write the C in in a different place because um, for me, sometimes I terminate early, on, not on this problem, but on another problem, I would terminate early. Actually, let me make this bigger. Um. On other problems, I de sometimes I, I make it, you know, I terminate early on, like in this, not in this problem, but I terminate early, and but then I forget to see in the rest, I forget to read in the rest of the numbers, and I've eaten so many issues of it. So I, now I just keep the reading and the, the thing separated. But nonetheless, but yeah, you can see that we just take the delta, uh, either subtracting from the left or subtracting to the right, that's the cost, and then... Here, I actually keep track, and you can keep track in multiple ways, but if this was a negative to the left, then I I keep track of what the number is to the left by using the a, a sub zero. Um, you can just set it to the first number anyway, and then just keep track, which is what I did. Um, and the, at the way end, I, we add in back the move, and this is the number of moves. Um, cool. That's pretty much all I have. Again, you know that if you're a long-time follower, you know that I don't really do Code Force Explain, but I thought this was a cute problem, a cool problem that I got a couple of requests on, and I happened to do it early enough. And also, um, yeah, I could see this this problem being on, on uh, probably not on an interview level, to be honest, just because it's a little bit too tricky. I think the interview is gen or not tricky, but like, not enough implementation to kind of get the idea um, of like programming, right? Like we're getting a programming uh, interview section. It's kind of tricky to be like, okay, you know, this person wrote four, four loops. We, we want to see a little bit more, more, you know, code structure kind of, you know, uh, like two for loops is not that, you know, a one for loop is not that uh, uh, interesting of a sample. Um, but the problem solving part is kind of cute and I, I can imagine seeing it on lead code or something like this. So yeah. Anyway, that's all I have for this problem. Let me know what you think and let me know if you'd like to see more code force explanations. Uh, yeah, uh, stay good, stay healthy, take good mental health. Good luck on your next contest and I'll see you later. Bye bye.